to request a specialist, press star zero. Each person will be limited to three minutes and per agenda item. Six years ago, the five surgeon I was referred to by my doctor for a breast reduction removed my gluteus, infragluteal ligaments, parts of hamstrings, and more without need or consent. He cut me in dozens of muscular zones, stabbed my sciatic knot, knee joints, and bony toe cancer. The surgical plan doesn't match what he did. I wasn't a candidate for what he did. I was petite, athletic, at my perfect muscular weight and fitness. With some, Yet he removed six pounds of needed tissue, destroyed my fascia structure, systemic health, and botched my breasts. <laughs> in consultation, the surgeon said, minimally invasive, conservative, and my concerns were totally overblown. In deposition, he said he learned power-assisted liposuction, which he used against my knowledge by reading instructions out of the box. He left me excessively bloodied in intractable pain and disfigured. I'm on SSI disability with serious physical health problems and hypertrophy due to his careless, unskillful actions. I'm unable to run my businesses, support myself, complete life tasks, have normal relationships, exercise, pursue advanced degrees, buy a home, take care of my elderly mother, travel, or enjoy life. I'm at risk for homelessness and will die young due to this. The surgeon engaged a defense team to slander me and cover his crimes. His paperwork is inept and fabricated, and his photos are deceiving. The TV show surgeon he hired, who lied in court for him, works for your board. I filed a case against both the surgeon and his witness. The case against the surgeon was supposedly investigated yet closed, although there's plenty of evidence of wrongdoing. Ten doctors, including four certified, board-certified plastic surgeons, have said this was below the standard of care, shows evidence of negligence, and was surgical battery. There's no way to verify who did your investigation and what their reasons were for taking the side of the surgeon who destroyed my body by going on an egregious sculpting trip against common sense or consent. Your board also refused to investigate the complicit witness who works for you and lied in court and is guilty of moral turpitude. The Medical Board of California has Please a conclude. required mission to prioritize public safety above any value or goal. Senator Jerry Hill said in an email to me, Failure by the Medical Board, uh, California Medical Board, to meet this goal in each ca case is egregious and legally, ethically, and morally unacceptable. The Board's failure in my case... Ma'am, please conclude. California. In the interest of public safety, I propose we start a new case or reopen the existing case. Your website leads people into believing the surgeon center of the negligent surgeon is accredited. It's not and hasn't been since May 2013. Alicia at the HDIC can confirm. Thank you, though. I, I think we'll connect you with one of our staff who can help you. We understand your pain. I'm not sure that you do, actually. Yes, we do, ma'am. So we will connect you with the appropriate people. Please uh, how, how work with our staff. Because I'm in pain just holding the phone, and so I'm going to have to hang up. So how are we going to connect me? Can you leave your name with the attendant so we can make sure that our enforcement chief contacts you? Y yes. Who, who do I leave my name with? With the attendant that's on the telephone. They will be able to take your information. Yeah, absolutely. I'll do that. Thank okay, you thank much. you. Thank you. Any, any other comments on the phone? We do have a comment from Eric. Your line is open. Hi, everyone. It's funny that you always tell people that you're going to have them talk to Christina Dell from enforcement after they make calls like this because nothing ever happens when Christina finally calls them. There's been two other calls in the past, and you've said you're going to put them through to Christina Delp, and she does absolutely nothing. First, I want to congratulate you all on the sunset extension of the medical board for another four years. I'm sure you're going to pat yourselves on the back for accepting the status quo instead of striving to improve the board for the protection of consumers as is directed by state law. In that same vein, I want to go on record and point out that your powers that be, which I assume is Kimberly Kirkmeyer, has once again not put the topic of the Public Records Act on the agenda for the meeting. I asked for it to be put on the agenda for the first time an entire year ago at the October meeting in 2016, and I've brought it up at every meeting since, and it's still nowhere to be found. It's egregious that you don't take this topic seriously and continue to allow employees of the medical board to break the law. I also want to point out again that you all work to protect the citizens of this state, not the doctors that the board licenses, and most certainly not anyone on your staff that regularly breaks the law. 
When you knowingly protect a staff member who breaks the law or a bad doctor, you yourselves become complicit in that crime. When you let a doctor off easy and they go on to harm patients, you are complicit in that crime. Let's just hope that the doctors who sexually offend their patients, like Dr. Hari Reddy, who sexually assaulted four of his patients, including a 15-year-old girl, don't end up doing it again. Unfortunately, your current president, Dev Ganadev, was part of the panel that restored the license to this four-time sex offending doctor and is now business partners with his brother-in-law, Prim Reddy, after accepting a $40 million donation from his new medical school. Pretty convenient, if you ask me. Lastly, you need to stop pretending that at least some of you are not being swayed by the California Medical Association. Dev likes to assure the public that the board doesn't allow themselves to be swayed, but frankly, Dev, we simply don't believe most of what you say. The CMA's membership is composed of less than 30% of all California... Let's conclude. If the bulk of our state's doctors refuse to join that club, why in the world would you let them have a say in anything that goes on with the medical board? So any of you who really doesn't want to be a part of breaking the law, I suggest you take the issues I bring to you seriously. Thanks. Good afternoon, my name is Marion Hollingsworth, and I am representing myself on this matter. In the list of activities and events accomplished by the Medical Board of California under the administrative updates, there was one that said, Board staff met with CMA, the California Medical Association, on issues of interest to both parties. However, these issues of interest were not disclosed. This raises some red flags for a number of reasons, particularly since this meeting could be viewed as a conflict of interest. For one, the CMA's sole purpose is to protect the practice and financial interests of its members, some 43,000 doctors, which is only about a third of the doctors in California. On the other hand, the medical board is entrusted to protect the state's 39 million residents from bad doctors. Now, the CMA has been able to successfully block just about every patient safety-oriented piece of legislation that has been presented for the past few years. Most recently, the probation notification issue in both SB 1033 and the Sunset Review Bill 798. What is concerning that there are members on this board who have more than a basic membership with the CMA. Dr. Ganadev is a former CMA president, has given $50,000 to the CMA for an annual reward to the doctor who recruits the most members, and he sits on the board of the CMA Foundation. Not only that, but the CEO of the CMA, Justin Corcoran, sits on the board of Dr. Ganadev's new medical school. Dr. Kraus has been a trustee with the CMA since 2010, according to his LinkedIn, and both he and Dr. Ganadev made generous contributions the CMA's Political Action Committee in 2016. Now, it has become obvious that the CMA is routinely mentioned at medical board meetings, usually whenever bills are being reviewed. Instead of giving their own opinions, board members will often ask first what the CMA thinks. So this gives the impression and the appearance that the CMA has a significant influence on this board. So when getting back to this meeting, you have to wonder, please conclude, why was the agency that's supposed to protect the people of California meeting with a lobbying group that only wants to protect doctors? So in the spirit of transparency, I ask you to reveal what this meeting was about. It would help to know where you stand. And also, I second the issue about the font being too small on the, on the briefs. So if you could answer that question on the meeting, I would appreciate that. Thank you.